there's National Wildlife Refuge. We are on the boardwalk overlooking Pelican Island. It actually chronicles all of the National Wildlife Refuges, right? Yep, starting with the most recent, counting all the way back to Pelican Island. 564, ending with Pelican Island National Wildlife Refuge, right out in front of us. So to date, we have 564 National Wildlife Refuges with the very first one, Pelican Island, right in front of us. So how did it come to be and what lessons can we learn from it? For starters, only so much of this story can be told standing on a boardwalk. Unfortunately for us, Mike owns a boat. Today, we're really lucky to have Mike as our tour guide. He's a working biologist, local fisherman, and conservation guru. We're gonna go check out Pelican Island, which I think is just out there somewhere. Now, Pelican Island is located in Florida, just offshore from Sebastian. And to get there, we have to cross the Indian River Lagoon. It's uh, the uh, most biodiverse lagoon estuary in North America. And on the far side of the lagoon, Pelican Island. There looks like there's some, maybe some brown pelicans in the tree. And the island was absolutely covered in birds, particularly brown and white pelicans, but other birds as well. That ibis is cool. One of the surprising things to me is how small the island actually is, in total only about three acres. So to really appreciate this island, it's important to have a quick history lesson. History lesson. Here we go. So sometime around the 1850s, people started killing birds all over the country for their feathers. Apparently they were really fashionable to wear in hats and stuff. And since the U.S. didn't have any protected areas, the birds were free game. That was until the 1880s when a German immigrant by the name of Paul Krogel came to Sebastian. He loved the birds and would stand guard with his rifle every day to keep people from killing them. One day he met this famous ornithologist who was like, Paul, did you know that this is the last rookery for brown pelicans left? We gotta do something. Paul agreed, so the ornithologist pleaded his case to President Teddy Roosevelt, a wildlife lover, who then declared Pelican Island the first refuge in 1903. And Paul Kroger was hired on as the first warden. But the next century was not easy for the refuge. You see, between feather hunters, misguided fishermen, hurricanes, and land development, times were hard. But it stood fast, guarded in part by Paul Krogel and the locals that wanted to protect it. Today, the recovery of the pelicans is testament to the success of the refuge, something that might never have happened if not for the hard work of one man making a courageous stand. The individual can make a difference, and I think he exemplifies that. Here was a man who was so determined to make a difference that he actually went out there, spent his time, and guarded this island and protected the birds. And that resulted in the designation as a National Wildlife Refuge. So by having that courage, and by having that compassion, and by going out and acting on it, you really can make a difference. And I think that's an important message for everyone to take home and to understand that you can make a difference. You can go out there and do something and accomplish something if you're passionate and motivated about it. So if you got this far, you might as well subscribe to our new channel right here. And we make a lot of other videos. Like last Earth Day, we made a historical piece. And if you're interested in the behind the scenes stuff, well, this area just so happens to have an awesome drop zone, so we got some pretty cool aerial footage. Okay, thanks to everybody that helped with this video, and thanks to Pierce and Olay for helping make this video possible. Okay, bye.